The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Exploding down the sideline. This is Hanging with the Boys, presented by Wingstop, where flavor gets its wings. Now, your hosts, Nate Newton, Kurt Daniels, Jesse Holly, and Shannon Gross. Welcome to the show, Thursday. You're looking live at Tostitos Championship Plaza outside the Ford Center to Star in Frisco. It's kind of busy. Some kids out there. Some lot of stuff going on. Chris, did any of them get loose back there? Not yet. Okay, just making sure those weren't <laughs> your kids. It is 45 degrees with a high of 46. The low is 35. And... That is Shannon. He is Nate. In the back is Chris holding it down with a lot of company back there. I am Zaddy Holly. Together we make Hanging with the Boys, a sports talk equivalent of Braille. People feel us us. when we speak. (laughs) We don't have Kurt today, but outside of the hallway, we do have the Duncanville Panthers. Oh, is that who that was? Yeah. Duncanville Panthers are out there. They state champs. State champs. I think back to back. Back to back. Back to back. Back to back. Duncanville state champs. Five or six A, Chris. Six Six A. A. Big six A. A. Yeah. D one. Will there be a seven A soon? There should be. Yeah. Those some big boys. That looked like a college team (laughs) up there. Man. And all them kids were juniors. What? Yeah, like about 20 kids out there. They I think feeding them down there in Duncanville. Was, was man. Juniors, man. Hey, man. funny story real quick. So, so one. Well, there's never been a story you told in your life that was real quick. You know, Everson was out there and told some kid, man, I would lock you down. And the kid looked down at his, he looks down at Everson and goes, not in those shoes. <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. Everson just started laughing. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Brought to, we're brought to you each and oh, every day funny. by Wingstop, where flavor gets its wings. wings. And look, I know we're past it. We're on to Detroit. Come on, Cooks. You don't want to be in Miami this week anyway today. 62 degrees and rainy. It's supposed to be below 60 tonight, Miami. So we're good. We good. We good. What's the, what's the temperature in AT&T Stadium, Chris? 70, probably? 73. 73, you think? Something like that. No wind, no rain, no elements. Have they opened the, the roof for the doors yet this year? Zero. Really? I think that's because of the kickers doing so well. Ah, uh, yeah. Not, like, yeah. Let's not screw do, up the mojo. Yeah, let's not do We're not superstitious. 33 just, in a row. Just stitious. Just stitious. <laughs> yeah, stitious, right? <laughs> so, Nate, do you have a? You want to kick it off with the Jimmy story, or you want to wait till later in the show? You want to think about one? Uh, Jimmy. Jimmy was a good man. Jimmy walked into a meeting one time. Mm-hmm. And it was a special team meeting. And we would all get there. The rule was you had to get there. And I started this rule where one time uh, it was a minute till. And I'm like, Coach, everybody here but one guy? Let's get going. So we started. Then about a week later, it was three, four minutes. We, everybody was in there. I said, Coach, if this dude walk in, you got to give him the maximum fine. The dude walked in. Coach gave the dude the maximum fine for being a late. Who was it? Do I don't know who it was. I, I, you know, I don't remember who it was. So we started every meeting that was a special teams. It was only special teams meetings where they started at say nine in the morning or eight in the morning. Everybody was sitting there with ten minutes to spare. Mm. Ten minutes till if you walked in there with nine minutes left, or eight, you was getting fined to the max. So if everybody so, was in there but one dude, but one dude, the one dude that comes yeah, in last yeah, getting you fined, no matter who it was, <laughs> you know. And so we we started that never be on time, you late, and that was true to form. So one day we in there, everybody got in there early. Uh, this kid from Texas A and M, linebacker, part of the wrecking crew. He was a great that outside was. linebacker. No outside. <laughs> And so Jimmy would, you know, make his little stops, checking to make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing because he was good for looking in the meetings. And if you back there joking around, you know, he'll, he'll hit the door or something and look at you like, hey, pay attention to what the coach got to say. You know, he caught me like that several times. Back there, Jack <laughs> around. Well, this one guy was back there asleep, and I can't think of his name. Chris probably heard the story before. And, and everybody went to shake him, you know, pup. 
his boys from Texas and with this Jimmy like, uh-uh, leave him alone. Just leave him alone. But when he wake up, just tell him to come see me. <laughs> <laughs> when he woke up, they said, hey, man, coach want to see you. So after the meeting, he went and saw coach, and we never saw him again. <laughs> Last year, <laughs> man, I what can't think of the it? guy that he was a good linebacker. Man, came from Chicago, so he was a Texas A and M guy, linebacker. So wait, he was a good, a good player, good player. But on our team, he was he was a backup player. But he, you know? but he, he had talent. Yeah, he had talent, and they cut him to set an example. Yeah, don't fall asleep in the meat. Wow. But then they but, asked him, but, say, yeah, here we go. Well, what, what if that would have been? If that would have been Emmett or somebody like that, Jimmy, what you would have done? He would say, I just probably got him a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, says, if Troy was sleeping with me, what would you do? Like, I would have got him a pillow. I would have got him a pillow. <laughs> yeah. So that's how it was. But I cannot think of this guy's name. I mean, he was a good linebacker, man. Do you, do you think teams around the league – because I've had several friends of mine that are Cowboy fans that are like, you know, you need to – Cut people to make an example, and you need to do this, and you need to toughen up. Does does that Sarah happen? Cap is, but it doesn't that happen do anywhere, that. though, does it? Or does it not still? anymore? Oh, no, 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 no. Well, New England, New England, that New England still gets you like that. Yes. Hey, Nate. Yeah. The, the player was John Roper. Yeah, John Roper, nice linebacker. He was drafted by the Bears. Am I correct? Uh, yes, the Bears in eighty nine ninety two. Look at your memory. Yeah, man. He he was a good player because, you know. Because I'm always checking to make sure, because I'm back there clowning, so I'm, I got my door on the front door because I don't want Jimmy to get me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because he would he just call me out, Nate, can you quit, you know, all the time? And so I'm looking, and then when I when he looked in, I'm looking at John, I'm like, don't touch him, don't worry about it. But when he wake up, just tell him to come see me. God. I'm like, wow. Wow. <laughs> so you think that still happened? Not – I'm talking like backup, not practice squad guys, but like a ba- a, a decent backup, solid backup guy. Yeah, I mean, you not everywhere. Yeah. yeah, but you you have to be able to have, you have to have the 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 cachet in the in the the ability to do so. Not every coach can. Right. 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 Um, you gotta remember, like Bill Belichick, he benched Wes Welker in the first half of a playoff game because he made the comments about. Rex Ryan, Rex Ryan's wife's feet. Right, right. And that was a rule of his. When you talk to the media, if you're not talking about yourself, about you, everything out of your mouth better be positive. Yeah. So, like, anything else, if you're talking about your teammates, it better be positive. Talking about another opponent, it better be positive. If you're not talking, if you now the only person you get down is yourself. If it's negative, it, talking it better be about you. Me, That's me, right. Me. Wes Welker did it, and he benched him. I was there when... Um, we were just to kind of say like we were doing conditioning. I think the running back was uh, Joseph Adai. I think it was Joseph Adai. Um, and he missed time. On the field, Bill's like, go get dressed. You're done. He missed what? He missed his time in the conditioning. Oh. On the field, we had, we had to do running. Mm-hmm. Right, wow. Go get dressed. <clears throat> You're done. You're not committed to what we need. Your, your, your commitment to what we need here is not good enough. I mean, an example of them. Wow. Remember, not, again, not everybody does it, but uh, same thing in New England. They had to run it back one week, rush for 250 yards, yeah, something I like that. that. Wow. Three touchdowns, yeah. running back out of Notre Dame. Three touchdowns, 250-something yards. He was late to a meeting the next day. Didn't play. I remember that. Didn't pl- but I remember that you see, yeah. what I'm but yeah. that but that is and it, like when Nate is saying it, I'm I'm thinking to myself, we make fun of it. I remember listening to Ed Reed. I, I think it was I don't I'm not sure if it was like his life situation, not his life, but like you know how they do the, the feature stories on the networks, and Ed Reed talked about the little things in championship teams, and he said I remember getting on my guys. Because we would have volunteer firefighters or service people right. come in to clean a locker room up. And he's like, wait a second. You mean a dude who's fighting a fire got to come in here and pick up your tape ball after, after, after you practice? Yeah. And he got on his guys and he was like, if you can't walk three feet to the trash can and put it in there, we ain't going to win on Sunday. And it's those small things that players a lot of times will hold guys accountable for. 
But also, if the players don't hold them accountable, there is an organ. It is an organizational. Um, uh, what word am I looking for? Come on, you've been on point with the words this week. Uh, but but, <laughs> but there, yeah, but there but there is a there there is a a hierarchy that would be like, oh, okay, we're going to enforce it as well. We're going to back the guys, especially our veteran guys who are doing the right thing. We're going to back them with saying, "We got your back." Mm. And those teams, you see, less likely make the dumb off the field decisions. Less likely make. The best, the, less likely make the dumb on field decisions, those critical moments, those undisciplined moments, those penalties, those offsides, those bad plays. Those teams, that's it. That starts internally. Is that because the organization has the, yes. the leaders back? Yes. And then the leaders are in each other, everybody's yes. holding each other accountable? Yes. And if you're not holding each other accountable, it's more of a sense of team, right? Yes. Because that translates to Sunday. Look at the good teams. Yeah. L- like, look at the teams that, that kind of. And I don't, I don't know this to be true, but a lot of people who have, will use the Eric Bieniemy situation. One of the things that they said about Eric Bieniemy was he was the enforcer under Andy Reid. They kept everybody in check, everybody in line, responsibilities, yada yada yada, offensively. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not saying that the reason why Cincinnati, sorry, excuse me, uh, uh, Kansas City is not performing this year because Eric Bieniemy is not calling the plays. But it's those things like that that a dude is going to keep you accountable, right? That's going to hold you accountable to the little things, to the drops, the misassignments, the depth, the routes, the all the blocking, all those things. If you don't have those things, it we don't think of it about it a lot of times. But look at our organization. Look at look at our team this year, right? And I, I don't want to. I'm using his name, but I'm not. I'm not picking on him. Sam Williams have made costly off the field lapse of judgment decisions. Sam Williams has done on the field costly lapse of judgment decisions. Right? You see the guys who consistently make those those things, those key and, and it costs games. It costs you games when you when it, you when you think about it. It's those the Cowboys outside of really outside of Buffalo and San Francisco the games that they've lost, it's been discipline stuff. It, it, it's, it's been dudes penalties. who just penalties, assignment errors, mm-hmm. free will doing. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's that stuff. It ain't because folks just better than us. Like like the ain't no team whether we on the road or playing at home. There is no team in the National Football League that just they just like yo. They just better than us. Like they from man to man roster, they just got better dudes than we have. Now some teams you'll have that you're like yo, y'all just don't have talent. Y'all just y'all just void of talent. It's never that people are more talented than the Cowboys. It's never that. It's never. As long as I've been around here, now that may have been in some them years in like you know kind of like post yeah. ninety five to right. about two thousand ish. There might have been some talent issues in that situation, but it's ne- for the most part it's never been you just better than us. You just got more. Jimmy's and Joe's than we have, it's been those little things that has consistently bit the Cowboys in the butt in the moments that they just can't. You know what I'm saying? Like, you try to go out there and get a stop and hold the jokers, Damone Clark, face mask, 15 yards. God, come on. It's, it's those things that, 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 that you don't win by. Yeah. All right, let's take our first break. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit of uh... – Lions, uh, what are we doing? Lions offense, offense today? Cowboys defense? When we return for the second segment of Hanging with the Boys. Fall is here, and that means football is back, bringing all the delicious game day foods with it. As you prep for all the big games, tailgates, and watch parties, let Yokiero be your one stop destination for all things home gating. Yokiero's fresh, flavorful, ready to serve guacamole made with real Hass avocados will score taste bud touchdowns as you cheer on the Cowboys. Yokiero's wide range of mouth watering and versatile products can be found in your local grocery store's produce or deli section. Grab some today. Star Sports Tours is the only official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, offering exclusive game weekend travel packages with pregame sideline access and photo ops with current players, cheerleaders, and cowboy legends. You want to stay at a team hotel, attend the best tailgate party in Texas, tour the star, and talk X's and O's with me, Everson Walls, 
With Star Sports Tours, you can. Visit CowboysTravel.com to book your travel package today. SeatGeek has your back no matter what kind of Cowboys fan you are. So whether you're a diehard fan or a don't really care fan, a we got them next time fan or we'll never win again fan, a here for the tailgate fan or a first one through the gates fan, SeatGeek not only makes buying and selling tickets easier than ever before, they made just about everything else easier too. So whether you're a here every week fan or haven't been here in years fan, SeatGeek has you covered. Download the SeatGeek app today. SeatGeek, your ticket to great Dallas Cowboys seats. How's Wingstop sound? Crispy, juicy, classic wings. Made to order, cooked to perfection. And sauced and tossed in those 11 soul-satisfying flavors. Paired with hand-cut seasoned fries, house-made honey mustard, blue cheese, or signature Wingstop ranch. And, of course, spicy Cajun fried corn. I think you've heard enough. Get your flavor delivered at Wingstop.com. Back to Hanging with the Boys. I see your wheels turning. Welcome back to the second segment of Hanging with the Boys. (laughs) (laughs) Carry the one. Subtract the two. I'm like, if we do a step and repeat back here, we can we, lock this thing We up. can do it here, though. For real? No. Second segment uh, brought to you each and every day by blockchain.com. Thank call you. Call me, Nate. Blockchain.com. <laughs> 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 I don't want to feel your pockets <laughs> get fatter while my hair gets skinnier. Nate. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, all right. A little bit of, uh, little bit of Lions offense. This isn't a offense when you when – you, I guess they're sneaky good because Jared Goff is third in passing yards and touchdowns. Mm-hmm. And then they have a really, I guess, would you call it a physical run game, physical O line? Nobody really jumps off the page except, you know, St. Brown is good, really good. Laporta is really good. But other than that, there's nobody that's a superstar, I guess, on their team on the offensive side of the ball. I guess, uh, what's Not in Dallas. But in Detroit, but in oh, the yeah. eastern half oh, of the yeah. country, you know, <laughs> see, that that's the problem we face here is uh, our guys are over-the-top superstars and everybody else is kind of until they run into us. And then we say, wow, I didn't know that. I, I didn't know Cooks was that good. <laughs> Not James Cook. is a superstar. Yeah. You know, so these guys are for real. Who are the guys? Who are the guys to look at? Pick pick a guy offensively. David Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs, and Brown. Amara Saint Brown. I, Brown, I, and people, you know, people say, "Oh, he's good." No, he's a little bit better than good. He's lighting folks up. He's he's he got what seven eight touchdowns, seven or eight touchdowns. Mm-hmm. This kid ain't no joke, man. Where would you put him? He, he in the slot, ain't he, Jess? Like he's he, all over. He, yeah. In the pecking order, is he top 15? Like number oh, seven? Oh, yeah, he's top 15. Top 15. He, he, oh, he's top out, 10. Out of the top 10 guys oh, yesterday, yeah. named, the four or five guys yesterday. And he's right he, there? He, yeah. Yeah, he's in that second level. Yeah, like, second level you guys. You know what? You know what's funny? Like, he's he's where CD was about a year and a half ago. Yeah, yeah. Right? Remember, we're like, what year is he in? Third? Second or third? Second or third? I'll yeah. look it up. This kid ain't no this, this kid ain't no joke, man. This kid This kid ain't no joke, man. So so Nate 20 21 4. He was a first fourth round pick in 21. So 3. Okay. Third yeah. year. Yeah. Which does the you used to it took what running backs could come into the league and contribute and be really good or great their first year. It mm-hmm. usually took receivers 2 to 3 years. That's changed a little bit cuz you got receivers coming to the league now. Their first year, they're lighting it up. Is it still, if you're like, does it really take two or three years? Like CD, it's taking him three years to become elite, right? I would put him in the elite category. I would. I would. Does it still I take would. about three years for a guy to really figure it out and know yeah, what's going on? Because from the receiver perspective, it's it's learning a couple things. It, it's it's when you go in college. A lot of times, it's you're just better. You're just better. 
<laughs> right? The, the, the top receivers in college. Because you, you, like, for example, you might see Georgia once. You might see Alabama once. Right? You might see a Texas once. So the, the opportunity for you to go up against a top flight defender or defenders, you ain't seeing that week in and week out. Mm-hmm. Right? I don't care what conference you're in. You, you just not. You, you just aren't. Then you jump to the league and it's the top flight defender. So now you have to work through, well, this corner is good at press. Well, this corner is really good with his feet. Well, this corner is now a 10-year vet, and he didn't see all the routes, combinations that we – you know what I'm saying? So it takes you a little while to understand, one, yourself, two, route concepts, because the language changes from where you were at in college. From posters from to posters, talking. Right. <laughs> so, so, so you have to understand, because they, they give you they give you the, form, the protection, the formation, the motion, then the play. Yeah. Right, you got to process all that, and then the complexity of the defense. We talk about it all the time when we talk about these other teams, and it's like, oh, what are you going to do pre-snap? Well, what what happens post-snap? And it takes some time to realize when the safety start to move and linebackers buzz out and guys impress at the, at pre-snap, and then right before the pre-snap they bail. Who where the robbers coming from? All these different things. So it takes about two years to three years to really. Understand your offense, understand who you are, understand defense, and then put it all together to go out there and produce. And that's if you're serious about being the guy. Yes. Because a lot of receivers got so much talent, and they never become the guy. And it also, and if your coach stays long enough, yeah. your coach or your offensive coordinator stays long enough, yeah. right, to you to your development. Because yeah. sometimes you can have guys, you, you know, you you get drafted, and now all of a sudden your offensive coordinator he going to get a head coaching job somewhere else. You got a new guy come in. You got to relearn Ooh, the system, yes. relearn what he wants you to do, how you fit in that system. That could take a. That, he that could might not you. like you, right. That's the, that's so scary, man. Because no, that's a great point. Because wow. the office according that you may have came in with, he had a specific use for you. Yes. When the new guy comes in, he can go. Well, I don't like you in that role. Yeah. I like you in this, this role. role. You yeah. like, well, damn, I spent all off season trying to get myself <laughs> right for that role. All right, right. Now I got to change again. Yeah. So, but looking at this team offensively, uh, it, it starts up front. Right, we say this every single week. They have one of the best offensive lines in the league. Mm-hmm. Right, I mean, like one of the best. It's no secret they're going to run the football. It's not a secret. They're going to start with running the football with Jameer Gibbs and and David Montgomery. David Montgomery is going to be the lead back, and then they're going to sprinkle in Jameer Gibbs. It's kind of like I don't want to call it thunder and lightning. It's kind of like they're 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 both really good backs, but they're going to run the football. Um, you're going to see a ton of different sets. You're going to see empty. You're going to see 11 personnel. You're going to see 21. You're going to see 12. You're going to see 10 personnel. Like they're going to they're going to mix their personnel up. And I do want to give a shout out. Fun fact, their offensive coordinator Ben Johnson mm-hmm. was my teammate at the University of North Carolina. Really? Yeah. Ben Johnson 36 years old. I was going to say how do you, how old does it make you feel that Offensive coordinators are I know. graduated with you. I know. Yeah. Just wait till draft picks start. Their parents are the same age as you. Man. That's, that's when I realized I was old when we yeah. picked up Taco at the airport and his parents were the same age as me. I was like, <laughs> ah, I'm old. <laughs> I am old. But Ben Johnson is a it was a backup quarterback at the University of North Carolina. So one of the things that he understands and the way that he puts his offense together is run blocking, protections. They're gonna motion. They're going to shift. We're going to see a lot of that in this football game. It's come. It, it, it's happening. It, it's going to happen for the Detroit Lions. Um, they're going to run. They probably run. When you have a good running game, and, and Nate's going to know this because he comes from an era where they ran the football. When you have a good running game, your passing game is built on play action. They play action. They play action. They play action. And what does that mean? Is play action simply means you'll see the quarterback under center. He's going to get the snap. He's going to extend the football for all eyes to see, like he's handing it off to the running back. And then he kind of his back will be turned to the defense. 
He'll tuck it away. Because now what I want you to see is, I want you to see, because in your mind, it's already programmed. I'm telling it to you. You know the coaches down the hallway telling it to the players, they're going to run the football. They're going to run the football. All the defenders are thinking of the Dallas Cowboys, we can't stop the run. We can't stop the run. So we got to come downhill. We got to come downhill. So when you see them put the ball out for play action and he snatches it back, what happens is now linebackers have stepped up. Safeties have stepped up. DBs have paused for a second, and everything else is happening towards them. So advantages are built in the play action. This team in the passing game, I like to call it they're they're a layered passing team, meaning they're gonna they're gonna always give you something shallow, they're gonna give you something intermediate for the most part, and then they're gonna give you something behind that a little bit deeper. Um, Sam Laporta, who is uh, I, I come from a, I guess like tight end you now at Iowa. Um, he he's he is a really 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 good player. We talked about Amara St. Brown, really good player. Uh, William uh, was it Williamson or Williams, the other wide receiver? Yeah, Jamison Williams. Jamison Williams, speed. Think speed when you think about Jamison Williams. Think speed. Think like Waddle speed, like that mm. level of speed. He comes from that Alabama group, I believe. Where did he come from? Does it come? Does it say on there where he came from? No, and I just said. Uh, 21, 22, yeah, and it, it doesn't say. I'm sorry. I, th- I think he, I think he comes from that Alabama group as well. But think speed when and, and he's he's a little bit kind of now starting to get a little bit more involved in what they do offensively. But he is their speed element on that football team. Amara St. Brown, he is what Nate was talking about earlier, a guy who is serious about football. Who wants to be great? His this is a guy where it, when he sat down in an interview and they asked him, he said, "Can you tell me and name every receiver that was taken ahead of you?" He knows every single one of them. Oh, is that the guy? He knows every single one of them. He can sit and tell you every I dude, saw that. every dude that was drafted ahead of him. Like so, Just that, like that. That's his mindset. Yeah. His mindset is, I have this chip on my shoulder that y'all thought these other dudes were better than I was. Yeah. And he's always trying to prove it. He's a really excellent route runner. He is physical to the football. Hands catcher. Like he is. He he is. A, he's not the tallest dude, but he is a strong. Out he came from Alabama. Wilson. Yeah. Um, Amara St. Brown is. He's good. Like he's a good route runner. He's a good receiver, contested ball catcher. Um, he is what you want in a receiver. Like he gives you everything but, but the, the the vertical height. He gives you everything that you want there. Um, Jared Goff, we 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 known him for a while, and the Cowboys got the Jared Goff a year ago at home. Um, they 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 got after him. They got after him. I think they sacked him five times. He threw a couple picks. They got after him. Uh, but I think that was a team that was kind of really trying to still figure themselves out a little bit. This is a team that's really um, – um, they're confident in what they do. They've they've won the division for the first time in 30 years. So they're riding high on that. They're, they're, they're riding really, really high on that. And the thing that the Cowboys have to be able to make sure that they do, which has been an issue for the Cowboys, it's, it's the communication. Now you're at home. Things should be working better for you at home. But defensively, you have to communicate. Jared Goff can he can make every throw. He can make every throw. If I if I'm calling my shot for interception from Jared Goff, if I'm calling my shot, mm-hmm. I, I would call my shot and I would call say it. this. It would be the ball would be in the middle or slightly on the on the left hash. They would do play action. They would do play action. He would do a slight roll to the left, and he's gonna throw the deep out route or some sort of comeback to the left sideline. Now, all quarterbacks and quarterback coaches, and all I'll tell you. If you want to determine does a player have a strong arm, is can you throw from the opposite hash mark, can you throw the out route to the opposite sideline? And I watched Jared Goff throw that pass over and over. And he threw it to Amara St. Brown, right? But he's going to throw that. He's going to play action pass, a semi-rollout. He's going to get back to that right hash, and he's going to fire it 40 yards across the field to a 10-yard out route. So he has the arm? He has the arm to get there, but that's a, that's long, a long throw. Way. That's a long throw. So if I'm calling by shot for interception, it's going to look on that. It's going to look like that right there. Uh, but this team, it, it's it's the trenches. If you don't stop the run, it doesn't make a difference. Let's take a break and let's talk about the trenches because Detroit has the best, one of if not the best offensive linemen on their team, and PFF has them ranked really high. We'll talk about that since since Kurt's not here. 
I'll pick up the uh, PFF um, <laughs> banner and wave it when we come back for the last segment of Hanging with the Boys. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap it to Prescott, who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With Blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. How's Wingstop sound? Crispy, juicy, classic wings. Made to order, cooked to perfection, and sauced and tossed in those 11 soul satisfying flavors. Paired with hand cut seasoned fries, house made honey mustard, blue cheese, or signature Wingstop ranch. And of course, spicy Cajun fried corn. I think you've heard enough. Get your flavor delivered at Wingstop.com. SeatGeek has your back, no matter what kind of Cowboys fan you are. So whether you're a diehard fan or a don't-really-care fan, a we-got-em-next-time fan or we'll-never-win-again fan, a here-for-the-tailgate fan or a first-one-through-the-gates fan, SeatGeek not only makes buying and selling tickets easier than ever before, they make just about everything else easier, too. So whether you're a here-every-week fan or haven't been here in years fan, SeatGeek has you covered. Download the SeatGeek app today. SeatGeek, your ticket to great Dallas Cowboys seats. James right here, your 2022 Dallas Cowboys fan of the year. You know how much I love my Cowboys, and I am thrilled to be talking to you about the 2023 Fan of the Year Award presented by Captain Morgan. We're looking for the ultimate Cowboys fan to spice up the game. That means you eat, sleep, and breathe the Dallas Cowboys. If that's you, or if you know someone like me, then go to DallasCowboys.com slash Fan of the Year, and you could win tickets to Super Bowl 58 and so much more. Enter today. Back to Hanging with the Boys. Welcome back to the final segment of the show, brought to you each and every day by Jigsaw, the official dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. And for the final segment, welcome to the show from Storyline, Nick Eatman. What's up, guys? Welcome back. Thanks for stopping by. Are you all right in here? We're good, man. We're just uh, this is a chill Thursday. I'm this, a this, is, this is for real. Thir- this, this is a this is a team that we getting ready to play. That's saying in their mind. And their coach is telling I can sit down, Campbell, walking around, yeah. pumped up, yeah. just done did 800 push-ups, 300 set-ups, saying, fellas, we're going out here, we're going to destroy the yeah. Cowboys. You know why? Because if if those 49ers slip, we're going to win the whole thing. Does he talk like that? We're going to win the whole thing. I- you know, I, I believe you. I believe Dan Campbell. I'm telling you, bro. Is telling them what Nate just said. <laughs> I'm telling you. I believe Dan Campbell is telling them a lot of what we said about going on the road and getting yeah. quality wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like I, I think I think I, I think Dan Campbell is telling you. telling his team. Said, so, you know what, guys? They consistently talk about that team being one of the standards in this league and how good that team is at home and they win all these games at home and they're yeah. this at home and they're that at home. Let's go F take them. it. Yeah, F them. yeah, and I do believe because Dan Campbell's been around here, like he right. he understands the culture of what yeah. the Cowboys are. And then Dan Campbell said, "Hey, you know what?" And they're having a party on Saturday. Yeah, so, for their coach. They're, they're having a party on Saturday. They, all these guys are coming back. They're gonna they're gonna introduce they're gonna in, uh, uh, introduce duck. Induct. 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 There we go. I couldn't get it. I was like, wait a second. This is not something induct like, wait a or introduce? They're going to introduce both. and induct. They're going to do both. Y'all swap places this week. I know. Nate's been pulling all the out words, the big words. And and I just <laughs> can't even speak. I got the country <laughs> twang going on over here. Um, but Let's go rain on that parade. <clears throat> too many yeah. TPs. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Too many Too many. Make trips. lightheaded. <laughs> Tongue tired. Whippets and TPs. Tongue tired. Mm. You work. know, it, it, well... <laughs> You know what got me, man? Well, what got, what got you? Because I'm watching David Montgomery, right? And I'm watching like 20 of his 10-plus yard runs. So I'm thinking that I'm going to see this dude bow, bow, because we're there in Chicago. I mean, he banging up yeah. in there, you know, not realizing Chicago didn't have a good offensive line. <laughs> so he was fighting for every yard. <laughs> and this Detroit has an excellent offensive yeah. line. Then I saw him hit up in that hole and sidestep 
and go 75 yards. They've rushed for 1,782 yards this year yeah. as a group. He ran away. And that's not even playing Jameel Gibbs earlier he, in the year. The, they're the only team that has two runners in the top 12 in the league. And he ran two. away from dudes. And for like, they both, two guys have 800 yards. It's a good thing that we can stop the run. No. No. I can't. And uh, Hankins is not coming back. Yeah. What's, how, how, how does – what do you do? You 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 bring you tell Mozzie to lose more weight so you can play. <laughs> no, you you come to so play linebacker. You don't play around. You you bring the seventh man in the box and you, you tell them that? they ain't gonna run. <laughs> you you bring the seventh man in the box from from the first play. huh? Yeah, you don't. You play situation of football. You at home. You come, you bring that seventh man in, but we don't want to hear six and a half guys. Mm-hmm. You bring the seventh guy in the box in first and second down, all obvious run situations, and you tell them no, no, and everybody everybody grab grass and do what you have to do. You, got, it, fellas, like I tell people, you can do it all you need to do. It's a mental mindset on what you're not gonna give up. And, and and if you and if St. James get me uh, uh the other kid, James Williams or St. John or whatever his name, whatever looks Playing good Monopoly on the, here? the back of the jersey. Whatever looks good you on the back of the jersey. Two hundred. Hey, that first row, man. I'm, I'm St. I'm Brown. All okay, St. Brown. Whatever it whatever it is. You know what? Continental, Mediterranean. You you can you can sit up here and joke me, but I don't wanna have to come save you on storyline when they fans get you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, I mean, you know, you talked about having a party. You're the one going to be at the party. Yeah. yeah. You are going to be at the party. Well, actually, front and center, too. Tell us what your what your Saturday is going to be like. Are you? Oh, yeah. we'll, I'll get there early and do some things with uh, what's that? What's that guy named uh, Scott? Scott Purcell. The guy yeah, you know for yeah, forty yeah, years. Forty years. The guy who pays you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Not really, Jerry pays me, but uh, well, you know. Yeah. Trickle down. You talk to him probably eight goes, times a day, and yeah. you just forgot his name. Well, the bottom line is, I'll be doing some early filming with him, and then uh-huh. we'll go up to the party, and then we guy we'll try to persuade guys to come down to the field so we, I can do some one on one interviews with them. Oh, that'd be awesome. Stuff like that, yeah. So I'm hoping we can get at least oh, one or two I see guys. How it is? Who's a player yeah. that you haven't seen in a while that you think is going to be here that you'd like? That I don't, I, I don't know because I talked to Miss Emily and tried to find out who was coming. And uh, they said a lot of guys, they, they didn't invite. I thought they would invite at least all the Super Bowl guys or the first two Super Bowls or guys that went through that hard time. Yeah. And, uh, they, you know, so I don't know. Yeah. I really don't know. So I'm going to have to grab whoever. Is there one know. guy that you see you like, man, I, I owed you a smack in the face for 30 years. I ain't seen you in 30 years. And did I'm a smack in the face? Not, not that uh, you would, uh, but, okay. but, like, last time you saw him. Man, I – no. All Anybody right, no. you just want to hug that you ain't seen in a while? Oh uh, man, I'm always trying to hug big Kevin Gogan, uh, uh, or Step Noski, and I, you know, them them guys that we were real. Them, them was them was the boys. Them was the. Be careful with Step now. Yeah. He's not that. He's not he's big not, anymore. No, but he's still he's still grizzly and mean. So I mean. <laughs> so will you uh, be out on the field for the ceremony? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. Wherever Jimmy had him, will be not too far away. <laughs> You know, remember me? There used to be fat guy that you took all his money <laughs> for all the whole season. You know, it's, yeah. it's cool is that, um, you know, what CD needs, what, two catches, three catches to, to pass Michael Irvin? Yeah, 100, 180 yards, I think. Well, yeah, he, he's getting he's close on the, on the yards, too, yeah. but but catches, I mean, he's probably. He, he probably can get the catches, but, you know. <laughs> we don't just, know. We just got to figure out. He might what, get two in part, the first quarter. Yeah, that's what we got to figure out what part of the game he's going to disappear. But what's. Well, I mean, I think it's neat that Michael will be there. <laughs> yeah, you know, Michael will be there. Oh, that's what I'm gonna try to get yeah. down there. Because once I say Mike, hey, go to Mike. I ain't got to get talk the way. anymore. Yeah. yeah. So if that if that happens, if Mike's there, right? Uh-huh. Which Mike I'm assuming will be there, and CD breaks the record, do they interact on that day, like after the game? Like, He'll probably text him because they all they got an 88 club and they all they all talk yeah. to each other. Do we think Michael stuff. will be there at the end of the game? I mean, halftime and all that, but then Michael, you think he'll still be there? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. If it's something happening, Mike Mike will be there. He's Mike right. said he said this publicly. Right. He says, you know, I, why would I ever want my number to be retired? Yeah. He said, yeah. because every time you get on the TV and it's Dez or a CD and they go, man, he sure. he hadn't done anything since They're bringing Michael Irvin. Drew and Mike. Michael Irvin. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. so, right. like, That's a good thing. So, Mike's mm-hmm. like, 
I never want them to stop talking. Because like, you can't talk about 88 in a cowboy uniform and at some point in time I don't not up. talk about me. So to answer that, will he be at the end of the game? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Like he's going to – Mike's not going to miss that opportunity for the photo op, for, you know, handing over a ball to him or something like, you know, the oh, CD yeah. or so, – there's something. There's something. There's something that's brewing, and, and Mike's not going to miss that opportunity to, awesome. to talk about. The, the thing that I love about my group of guys – we all, just about every one of my guys that and they who wants to, they successful. They got radio, podcast, TV. We got it all. That's my true. my group of guys got it all, and that when I look, won. yeah, okay, when I look around, uh, that makes me so happy. When you know when I can look around and just say, wow, there's there's my guy, there's my guy, there's my guy. Remember Moose and uh, Troy. Doing the what the Christmas deal, we had two of our guys that I played with doing pro, uh, doing analyst work oh, on, on the games, on, on, yeah. Christmas Day. And then the other guy was Tony. That's all Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the star, I, I tell people, the star is, and if you can, and that's what I be wanting. If I go over there and say anything to them players ever, I'm gonna say y'all, y'all are missing it. It ain't about now. Win now. Do everything you can to win now. Because what is going to come afterwards, you would never, ever imagine. Yeah. And that would be everybody. Yes. Everybody yes. on the team. Practice squad it guys. It don't matter. Dale yeah. Hella Street, wherever he's at, Phoenix, wherever, he's doing radio right now. Coach uh, Campbell, we brought here. He He's in Jacksonville working for their team. It, it, oh, I know. We come on, the, man. We were in the press box last year. Yes. Cheering in the press box. Yes. Like, uh, come on, camps. Like, <laughs> he was, he was uh, what's the, what, the Fox team. Jimmy, and then what's the brother? Mac of, is Kirk, Kirk Menifee? Kirk, Kirk Menifee. Yeah. He was here. Kirk was here. Yeah. He was years. here yeah. during them years. He, I thought you that, that dude, hand. that dude nobody likes, uh, who ran Shannon yeah. off the show. Skip. He was. This is this is where he really got to start at. Oh, oh, skip, 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 skip. Yeah, I was like, I thought you were talking about me. I was like, yeah. Oh, okay. No, nah, I'm just. I look back, and all of us, and when we see each other, even when I see Skip, you say, remember the days, Nate? Yeah, I remember the days, Skip. We didn't like you then either. <laughs> you know? I'm the only one I ever got along with Skip. Because I knew. You are the only one that gets along with everybody. But like, the thing even about the, it, Even the people that people do not like. Right. You like get along Skip, with I get along with him because I know I'm not going to ever give him nothing to stab me in the back with. <laughs> people will know that Skip is going to stab you. If I know you're going to stab me, man, I ain't even going to turn my back. I'm going to yeah. watch you do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what year did you get here? 99. 99. You've written a few books. I got 99 problems, but <laughs> Yeah, watch out. Kids in the room. Uh, what's your favorite Jimmy story of all time that you've well, written uh, about or talked about or heard? or? Um, you know, my first year here, they played the Dolphins on Thanksgiving. And he, he came back, you know, with the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. So there was a lot of talk then about, you know, the Jimmy Jerry stuff. And, and the Cowboys won that game on Thanksgiving. They picked off Marino like five times. And, I, I, I mean, it wasn't a lot of Jimmy, you know, story on that. But I just that's one thing I do remember is just, you know, the Cowboys facing him. But I did get to go down. We did a documentary on Leon Lett. Have you interviewed him once or twice? Oh, just once. Just once. Went down there to Florida. To Florida, down at his at his, his restaurant, restaurant right? and it was really cool. We went down there, and he he talked a lot about, uh, you know, Leon, but he, he also talked a lot about Jerry, and he even said afterwards, like off the camera, like I laid it on pretty thick, you know, like he he yeah. Oh, he's a mind worker, bro. Well, he, he he's <laughs> you know, and he said to us off the camera, he was like, and this was how many years ago? Uh, it's just like six. It's 2017. He said. Yeah, I, I want to be in the Ring of Honor. You know, of course, everybody wants the honors. But he goes, my kids really, really want it, really bad, and I, I want to give it to them. I want them to have that experience. It was important for them, mm-hmm. and so you know, it, it, and he, it's important. He wants it. He, he really wanted this, uh, and not not as bad as the Hall of Fame, probably, but pretty bad. So, I think this this is this will be a cool moment. I'm not sure why or. What they you know decided to do? I mean, I got Jimmy. Be know why? You I, know why? I do know why. Tell me why. I, 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 What's I, your thoughts? And I give you mine. Well, g- do yours first. Okay, no problem. Because Jimmy gave up a lot of his life to do what he's done, 
And when you give up this life, and and we when he first ever told us what he was giving up, we 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 all thought it was a joke. But but hey man, I I'm not married anymore. The only thing I got here is is, is this football team. Yeah. My mom and daddy come in town. I tell them I'll get with you after the game. My mom and daddy been here a couple of days. My kids just showed up in town. I told them I got this here to do. Mm-hmm. This guy gave up so much. And then when he got out of football and he realized that those same people were sitting there looking at you, he started making amends. Yeah. And he started trying to change the way he thought. He had to help one of his sons through a bad time. Mom and dad passes away. This, this, and the other. He started making amends. So when you can make amends and then you can bring these people in maybe later on of what you've accomplished and make them a part of it, that's why. Yeah. Mm. That's why. So that's how that go. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's why they want to be, you know, they 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 really want it too, and he yeah. wants it for them. I, I think Jerry just wants to do, I think I think he wants to do what, what's right. He probably didn't like being booed uh, when he introduced DeMarcus Ware. He got booed. Yeah. And I don't know if that was because of Jimmy, you know, not putting Jimmy in. I'm not sure. But, you know, booed at their own stadium like that, that kind of set him back a little bit. I, I think he just realizes the time is right to do it. You know. the, the the things that 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 uh that 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 Jimmy and Mr. Jones did, man, and th- this is what made the breakup so ugly, is they was inseparable up until the Costas yeah. interview. They 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 did everything together. But that winning that Super Bowl, now all of a sudden I, you know, I always pop in there, you know, I Mr. Jones just wanted a piece of it. Jimmy wasn't giving up none of it. Yeah. He wanted it all. And so he got it all. And, you know, you got out of here. Now, Coach had a saying, written or unwritten, five years is all you need in any any place. And so that was that five-year period. Maybe he was trying to make a move. Yeah. Maybe he wasn't. I don't know. But the way he did it was kind of messed up. And uh, Mr. Jones helped escort him out here by, you know, giving him extra. Yeah. And uh, now we got that dilemma. But now everything seems to be back on track. And more importantly, Coach has that new life style with his family uh, and friends. Uh, Jimmy used to be so uh, one-dimensional, focused, that if you wanted, if he couldn't see you, you know, when he – Focus down the monoculars, and I see Jesse, but out of my parenthesis, I couldn't catch you. You were gone because you you just went in his focus. Yeah, and he had a focus that, like I, I tell the young guys, he couldn't do this today because the salary cap wouldn't allow it. Right, the things that he did back in our day are uh, uh, to tell a guy, "Don't you stop running? I want if you want to make this team, I'm gonna hand you this ball." We're going to block for you, but I don't care. Until you hear this whistle, you better not stop running. And I looked at the kid, and I grabbed him running back. I said, son, don't stop running. You know, yeah. he ran, he twisted, he ran, he twisted, he ran, he twisted, and then he stopped. I looked at him like, son, you gone. He looked at him, then he saw him trying back to run. Jimmy said, don't worry about it. He blew the whistle. We never saw the kid again. So many of those stories. <laughs> I'm, I, I, I just <laughs> <laughs> and I look at it. The kid, but Nate, I said, you stop running, boy. Hmm. He told you not to stop running. And and people say, well, that ain't how you talk to a kid, or that ain't how you do it, or this. Da, 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 da. Well, that's easy for you to say, but guess what? Jimmy got three Super Bowl, two Super Bowl rings. I got three Super Bowl rings. Troy got three because we didn't stop running. I was gonna say you kept running that day. <laughs> yeah, we didn't stop running. <laughs> it's an ugly story. You could take it from whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You yeah. could take it from a, you know, oh that's that's too bad for the kid. Uh, you can take it from that's the way the times was. Right. Good stuff, fellas. Tomorrow. <laughs> I can still listen to those stories all day. Yeah. <laughs> oh man! Yeah. I just don't want. I don't. I want. I want to stop David Montgomery. Stop the kid from running. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, no, I ain't no good luck. We got these dudes, and he's the thunder of the group. 
Yeah. <laughs> and he went 75. Yeah. He was 75, man. Well, that hurt me when I saw that. Phone calls all day tomorrow. If you don't get enough phone calls on your show tomorrow, come back here and we'll take some more. All How about right. that? Same time, same place. Nick, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Nate, thanks for the stories. Bring bring some more tomorrow. We need a couple more Jimmy stories to close out the week. Jesse, good seeing you as always. Love the beanie. Now, baby, I'll Love be unfiltered here soon. I'll be unfiltered. Yeah. Chris, thanks, yeah. thanks for keeping yeah. the kids quiet during the show. Jazz, thanks for helping Chris. Hey, Dad, let's get a there. feel you for your, his son. Tell yeah, your get, son get, to get, get him up. on there. Let's get, come on, Jess, do it. Is he on? Is he ready, Chris? Is he ready, Chris? Get Jacob. Hey, he's, get he's Jacob. Get, right, here Jacob we go. In, get Jacob in there too. Here we go. Because we are the sports equivalent of Braille. People feel us. <laughs> All right. We'll see y'all All right. tomorrow. We out. <laughs> this has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?